Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have some fun and a conversation from the afterlife with Gavin McLeod. Do you know who that is? You might be too young or you might not recognize the name, but you would recognize the face of Captain Meryl Steubing from the Love Boat. Okay, I am so cheesy. I am so cheesy. I love those 70s, 80s sitcoms. I love them. I love them. And so Captain Meryl Steubing is definitely someone that I would like to channel. So we're going to have a conversation with him. Before we do that, I'm going to turn on the fan here. I'm actually in the greenhouse, but it's kind of warm, you guys. Even though we're into September, and it's going to get cooler as time goes on, but right now it's a little warm. So fan on, comfort level up, good. Okay, so Gavin, come on in, let's have a conversation. He feels very theatrical. He feels like London theater, like um, stage acting. It feels as though he got, potentially has had it, um, some experience as a stage actor, as a theater actor is what it feels like to me. Um, I see him kind of dramatic, like a dramatic actor. And I see some different roles when he was younger, it looks like. I also see him moving to different places. I feel like he may have lived abroad, I'm not sure, maybe as a child, maybe lived over there for a project or something that he did, like a film or something. And then I see, I see him married more than once, like it looks like twice maybe. It looks like he has children, two from one marriage, one from the other or something, two or two or one, not sure what that means. He might have some stepkids that he considers children, or he might be bragging about some grandkids, I'm not sure. So I don't know that much about you, obviously, because I don't Google. If you're new here on Above Life channel, you have to know I don't, I don't Google. I, I don't do that. You guys can do that. You wanna know about him? You just go Google, you find all the details. I like to talk to afterlife celebrity guests about stuff that matters to, to me, like that we need to know about life. Like this isn't a gossip channel. This is like, tell us some info about the afterlife so that we can be better people, we can live our lives more fully, etc. All right, so Gavin, it is a pleasure to meet you. I do love the love vote for sure. Can you share with us any kinds of interesting insights or experiences that you may have had during the filming of that particular television show that would be interesting to us perhaps? He's saying that daytime drama is like he's showing me, I'm like, soap operas. Did you appear in a soap opera? It feels like he did. It feels like he did. And then I feel like, um, is it As the World Turns? I'm not good with those so all those soap operas. I only watched you guys. I watched General Hospital and um, Young and the Restless a little bit way early on, like when I was a teenager and stuff. And then, but General Hospital's like all the time, my ride or die. And then all my um, days. I watch Days, I started watching Days in college and then I kind of watch it off and on every once in a while. All right, so I feel like he was on a soap opera, so he's showing me like daytime dramas. So was Love Boat supposed to be more of a dramatic series? He says, well, I don't know that that was the intention necessarily, he said, but we dealt with some serious issues. We were able to have some very serious conversations and serious topics that, um, he's talking about like drug abuse and, um, dealing with, um, and he's saying body issues or image, body image issues. There must've been, maybe one of the characters had that and struggled with that. One of the, not the characters, but the, um, one of the actors or actresses may have struggled with that. And he was aware of that. So yeah, that feels right. That kind of feels right. Like some, some things amongst the cast. So, um, but he's sharing like a camaraderie, a kinship, um, It didn't go as expected, he's saying. Like, um, I, we didn't, I didn't, he said we didn't necessarily think that Love Boat would last as long as it did, he said. So there's kind of the sense of we're going to do this, it's going to be something that we're going to do for a year or two, and then we're going to move on, or that it wouldn't have as much popularity as it actually did have, he says. So he's, he's, he's showing kind of this gratitude about it. Um, but he's showing me stage acting, like that's where his heart is. Um, but it's weird because I don't necessarily see him on Broadway, so I'm not sure what theater he would be in. I don't know if it's in L.A. or if it's literally London. 
because I keep seeing overseas, there's some kind of an overseas connection. I don't know if it's his family that lives overseas. I don't know if he lived overseas as a child or if he had a military family or something that they moved around, you know, that might be a thing. Um, not sure exactly what I'm seeing, but I do see overseas and he keeps bringing me over there. And he, she keeps sharing with me the theater, the theater. So perhaps he had a, um, maybe somebody in the family was in the theater. That might be, he might be taught, that might be something that he might be referring to. So um, Gavin, if I may call you Gavin, can you share with us, since your death has been in the last few months or so, what about the afterlife is different than maybe you might have expected, you know? Like, we kind of have some expectations of the afterlife. I mean, I think I do probably, if I really think about it. Um, how is the afterlife maybe different from your expect expectations? He's saying, I, I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was a religious person specifically, but I did believe in God and a higher power. And I think it's important to recognize and have gratitude, he says, for your life, for the opportunities you're given, for the experiences that you've had, the good and the bad. And he's saying, I had opportunities. He's saying he's sharing that he had opportunities and he does have a really big sense of gratitude. And um, the most important thing he says was, I didn't want to have regret. I did not want to have regret in my life. And so did you? So I'm asking you about the afterlife and your perspective. And he's, he's saying that you still have access to, he says, I still have access to the memories of my life in reflection, he says. But it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't touch me deeply or cut me deeply in a sensitive way. It doesn't feel the same way. It's not a feeling or an emotion. It's more of an energetic um, recognition. And so the biggest lesson, he says, is to not have regrets. He says, in love, in my love life, that would be the one place where I could have been a better husband. I could have been a better father. I mean, there are definitely things I, I feel like I could have done better for my family, for the people that love me. But at the same time, I did the best I could and they were quite understanding of me, of that. I'm not suggesting that I was a bad person in any way. He's not saying that he was like this bad guy or anything like that, but he's definitely giving me this vibe of like classic old Hollywood where it was kind of an old boys club and that there were um, liberties that could be taken, especially with um, young actors actresses he says and um you know parties and such and things and he says there's not there's not really a good way to to describe that it's it's come out about many of the um misbehaviors of hollywood people in hollywood um he's showing me that he's showing me like this battle with depression or that somebody in his life also had dementia or Alzheimer's. Okay, so Gavin McLeod, um, somebody in his life had Alzheimer's or dementia. I don't think it was him. I think it's somebody else connected to him. It feels like a woman, that's what it feels like. Um, and he's saying, he's talking about work ethic. And okay, so tell me about that. That's a really good topic for us as humans, right? Work ethic, because it's touted as like this thing, like, oh, you have such a good work ethic. Oh, good on you. Work can rely on you. But what about your family? What about your family? Can your family rely on you? Or is it just work that can count on you to show up for them? So this is a hot topic, work ethic. Tell us about work ethic. So from your human perspective and from the afterlife perspective, can you talk about that? He says it was always ingrained in me to be a hard worker, to be dedicated, to show up and give your all and do your best and not to accept defeat or failure, that it was just um, not the right fit for you and just to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And if the door was closed, you, you keep knocking and you keep pushing at it until it opens. You know, he says you can't give up. That's the work ethic. You don't give up, you don't give up. You keep working harder. You do, you take additional classes. You do things to grow yourself as a person, not just as an actor, but as a person. And you, you, you don't belittle any opportunity that you have to practice your craft. He really feels like he really respected acting and theater and has this, um, incredible career and profession that to be honored is how he feels. And so the work ethic is important, he says. There are so many others that, uh, this is a job like none other, 
he says, because you have one opportunity to really make something incredible and others are relying upon you for your part. And it's not just about you, it's about the entire ensemble, the cast, the story, the, the director, the, you, you really have this incredible weight upon you to bring the story to life and to help others feel what the characters would feel as if they were real people and, and to be known by the audience and that. So the work ethic is this, this devotion to understanding the intimate details of the story and the feeling of it, the feeling, he's saying the feeling. So does work ethic mean you work all the time and you aren't at home or you don't do other things, you only work? Like what is work ethic to you? What does ethic mean? Because to me, I think ethically, like what is ethical about that? What's the balancing? What's the boundaries? That kind of a thing. He says, I think it, it's different from my generation, he says. For my generation, it feels much more like the expectations and the opportunities that we're given that our parents weren't given. Remember, you know, we're children of the Depression. And so it's a different, it's a different type of, let me turn on my light here. I'm noticing that it's getting really dark in here. Just a minute, you guys. I'm gonna turn on the light here. Let's get some light going here. I told you the sun is going down. Okay, so we have a little bit of light. All right, we have this golden light. Oh, okay. <laughs> he says, we were raised by parents who lived through really difficult times. And so there's this understanding that you can't take life for granted. You can't take life for granted. And so the work ethic isn't really about a choice for me, he says, about my family or my job. It's about respecting the whole of the project or whatever you're working on and really being dedicated to that common shared mission. That's what work ethic is to me. It's like showing up and being part of a team and delivering something that is so incredibly moving or touching or human that others can actually feel it as if it were them happening to them or to a friend and they feel it. That's the feeling of it. So that's really, wow, that's really good. Okay, all right. Interesting, because I always see it like a kind of a choice. Well, I have a good work ethic. What does that mean? You give your all to work and then you're not available at home and he's not showing that at all. He's showing me this kind of devotion to the art and he's not talking about relationship at all in regards to work ethic. So it's not a choice of your family or your job. It's not that, that's my own perce perception. That's Bridget's lensing about work ethic, okay. Beautiful, that was really, thank you for that. And he's showing me though that the most important thing, this is Gavin McLeod. So he was Captain Merrill Steubing on the love boat. That's how I know him. I'm sure he had other roles, but that's how I know him, you guys. And he's sharing that his, the biggest thing from his life experience was about regret. Like he did not want to have regrets. He did not want to leave something undone. If there was an opportunity and I missed it or I didn't take it, I couldn't forgive myself because you never really know what could come of, of a role, of an opportunity, and, and you just really needed to say yes a lot more than you said no. And that means doing a lot of things at the same time, maybe, or at the same time, he says, like once, once you're committed, like I was committed to Love Boat, I, I had to make sure that I was there and present, work ethic-wise, he says, for that group, that project, but did I maybe lose some other opportunities? Yes, perhaps I did. But do I regret that? No, I do not. I do not regret that. I, I, do, I really do not regret that, he says. So, all right, good, okay. All right, so did you have a favorite on the love boat? Like who is your favorite character? Not actor, <laughs> but character. And he's showing me Doc. Yeah, so he was friends with, so the actor, I can't think of the actor's name. Uh, oh, it was Dr. Adam Bricker was the character's name. And they seemed to be friends on the, as time went on in the show, they seemed to become friends or be really good friends, like trustworthy. Did that extend beyond the actual character interaction? Yes, he says that reflected a real life friendship. He says a real true life friendship. He says, yes. Yes, very much, mm -hmm. very much, he says yes. 
that comes through. He says, and then you, he says, as an actor, then you use that. You use all of the experiences you have. And if you have real relationships with others that you're working with, and you can utilize that, and they can come through on screen as a very um, real and authentic uh, friendship, then that's, that's, that's how you, you use that. You use that. You know, he says you need to use that. That's great. That, that makes it more real for people. That makes people feel like part of the crew, he says. So, all right. That's great. All right. So with that... We have had a conversation with Gavin McLeod from The Love Boat. That's how I know him. You can go ahead and put other movies or TV shows or how you know Gavin McLeod yourself or his work. You can go ahead and share that below. Remember, I do not um, Google up or look up on the internet any kinds of details about that, the actors or actresses. Usually I don't do that. If I do, I'll tell you before when I'm doing the channel because that's not what we do on Above Life channel. I'm not here to be a, like a journalist and tell you all the data and the facts and the drama and all that. I'm here to talk to the afterlife celebrity about human life to get insights for you and I so we can live our lives better. Because the whole goal here on Above Life Channel is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope, because this is your life. It's yours. And you get to live it. Just live it. This is Bridget. Thanks so much for being here. Before you leave, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel and check for notifications. You can come here on Mondays and you can find a new channeling video every Monday. And don't miss the Sunday Morning Coffee podcast with Bridget on Sundays. If you're looking for me on social media, you can find me at Bridget Inspired on Instagram, Bridget Inspired on Facebook as well.